8 News starts now with your Storm Tracker 8 forecast first. Hello everyone, Storm Tracker 8 Chief Meteorologist John Bernard. Temperatures dropping into the 20s this evening for most of central Virginia, but you wake up tomorrow morning a few clouds over 32 degrees. We're going to jump to 53 by the lunch hour, headed into the mid to upper 50s. Several days of mild weather headed your way for the remainder of the week. We'll talk about it next on 8 News at 11. Now on 8 News at 11, homeless and heartbroken. I feel like I've been robbed of my whole life. 8 News is taking action after a Richmond woman and her children are thrown out of a hotel while she was undergoing an emergency C-section. Caught on camera, a porch pirate stealing a package from a Richmond neighborhood. What local authorities are warning residents to do to protect their belongings this holiday season. Monday night showdown between the Washington football team and the Seattle Seahawks here at FedEx Field. The latest coming up on 8 Sports at 11. Today's top stories in your Storm Tracker 8 weather in the first eight minutes. 8 News starts now. They can't continue to do people like that. A Richmond woman is desperate and at her wits end tonight after she says she and her children were evicted from a homeless shelter with all of their thro belongings thrown out without warning. Thanks for joining us for 8 News at 11. I'm Eric Phillips. I'm Deanna Albritton. After having an emergency C-section at the hospital, a homeless mother was heartbroken to find the Richmond hotel room where she was living had been emptied out and a new family had moved in. In an exclusive interview, 8 News reporter Ben Dennis is taking action and getting answers tonight for her. Ben, what do you know? Eric and Dana, tonight I spoke with that young single mother in Richmond who's now living in her car with her kids, 7 and 11 years old. They were last living at this Days Inn Hotel off of Midlothian Turnpike from the help of Commonwealth Catholic Charities, but it's also where their belongings were last seen. You know, my hospital bag for me just having my baby. Nicole Thweet is unsure where to turn days after delivering her premature daughter at the hospital. All these little containers are breast milk storage bottles. She's now living in her car with her two oldest kids. After leaving the hospital on Friday and returning to the Days Inn hotel room she was living in, when she arrived, left shocked. Before I stick the key in, I heard voices on the other side. So I knocked and a little girl open, comes and opens the door and I'm like... Another family had moved in. Her belongings were gone. Everything, clothes, shoes, hats, coats, all of our social security cards, medi medi you know, Medicaid cards. A representative with Catholic Charities who helps house homeless people like Fleet at the hotel tell me they disposed of her belongings. Oh, this is all I have. Thrown out. They tell us if rooms are not being used, they move in another family. But Fleet like, says no one contacted her in advance. I feel like I've been robbed of my whole life. For now, the car is home. And my son, he likes to sleep beside me. We lean the seat all the way back, and my daughter, she'll just lay back here. Tonight, her oldest kids okay. are out of the cold at a friend's house. Her other daughter, in newborn intensive care, weighing less than two pounds. With me being in the hospital, I did not know that I had to call, call anyone to let them know, hey, I'm in, you know, I'm, I'm having my baby early. Commonwealth Catholic Charities went on to say that their housing program at this hotel is not forever. The timeline typically lasts 60 days, but Thweet was there for that amount of time, but she says she wasn't told about that timeline, nor did she know that it might have been up. And I asked Catholic Charities why they didn't, why they didn't rather call her and tell her before they were removing her belongings. They had said that she was no longer a client, but she's welcome to reapply for the program. Thweet tells me she does not have any intention to do that. In Richmond, Ben Dennis, 8 News. Thanks, Ben. Hopefully she is able to get the help that she needs. New tonight, a shooting in Richmond in the Westover Hills neighborhood, and it's one of several in the area in the past two days. So we want to walk you through the timeline of gun violence we've been seeing in this area. Tonight, police are investigating a shooting that we just told you about, that one in Westover Hills. That was called in around 6 p.m., according to officers on scene. That was active while our crew was there, but police haven't released any details about what happened. Four hours before that at 2 p.m., Henrico police responded to a homicide on South Oak Avenue. Officers found a woman with a gunshot wound at the Bell Sun Apartments. She later died at the hospital. Henrico police said they had a person in custody and that it's domestic related. 
And back in Richmond this morning at 530, a woman was killed in a shooting outside a Richmond apartment. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene near the Bloom Apartments on Chamberlain Avenue. And yesterday in Richmond, a security guard was killed in a double shooting in the city's north side. 32 year old Siobhan Rochester was gunned down while working at Thirst Bistro and Bar on Northumberland Avenue. Another person was taken to the hospital. No word on charges in any of these cases. New at 11 caught on camera a porch pirate stealing a package from one Richmond neighborhood. And with more online deliveries likely heading your way, law enforcement are warning you to be on the lookout and protect your belongings. 8 News reporter Olivia Jacobith joins us live tonight. Olivia, so what should we all be doing? Well, Eric, Daniel, we'll get to that in just a moment, but the craziest thing about this is that the resident I spoke with who actually experienced this says that there were actually people inside the home when this all happened. Now, he watched this unfold from an app on his phone while he and his girlfriend were at the movie theater. Now you see it. Now you don't. A porch pirate strikes again in Richmond, this time in Fulton Hill. It feels like an invasion of privacy. You know, someone just like walking on our porch and walking away with who knows what. Last week, Patrick Morley had $30 of cat litter stolen from his front porch. The incident caught on camera while his girlfriend's parents were inside. But that didn't stop the thief from striking. My girlfriend and I were at the movies. We were waiting for the movie to start, and I looked at my, uh, the app on my phone that records everything that happens you know, around our house. And, uh, and we saw some guy just walk on their porch and just walk off with the package. It's a problem that's not unique to Richmond. Henrico police issued a warning to online shoppers last week to have retailers hold their packages for safekeeping. Sergeant Kerry Hansen saying home surveillance systems like this are a step in the right direction. The holiday season leads to an increase in package thefts as well as you know shoplifting. Um, unfortunately, there's an increase in shoppers out and packages being delivered. Morley says he's still going to keep ordering packages to his home. He also plans to file a police report for this crime in the hope that whoever's responsible gets caught. It seems like it happens everywhere. I've always felt safe in my neighborhood. If we don't know about it, we can't help you and we can't help to solve it. Now, Henrico police say there are even people who will follow around those delivery trucks in your neighborhood and then wait for the package to be dropped off so they can pick it up that way. So to stop this from happening to you, authorities suggest you can put your package on hold with the retailer or shipper like Amazon, UPS, FedEx, and even Kohl's. And then you can arrange to pick it up whenever it works best for you. Live in Henrico County tonight, Olivia Jake with 8 News. Good information, Olivia. Thanks. Chesterfield police say it was 49 year old Theron Austin who was killed in a Thanksgiving night crash on Hull Street Road. Investigators say around six o'clock Thursday night, a car was traveling east and hit Austin. The driver stayed on scene and is working with police. If you know anything about this incident, please call Chesterfield police. One person was killed in a crash on I-295 North in Hanover this afternoon. State police say a car was heading north when it ran off the road and hit a cement pillar connected to the Shady Grove Bridge. The driver died at the scene. There were no passengers in the car, and the cause is still under investigation tonight. A local woman is completely flabbergasted after her car was stolen not once, but twice. Monique Gibson filed a police report twice in about a month after her Ford Edge SUV was stolen right in front of her Richmond townhome. The thieves shown in this video from a neighbor's surveillance camera. Both times she says she left the car locked and she has the keys, so she has no idea how they got into it. Now Gibson and Richmond police are reminding the public to be vigilant. People are clever nowadays, you know, and a lot. I, I have a remote start on my car, so it might be something with the remote start and being able to trick that and, you know, I don't know. Be safe. Don't keep anything in your vehicles. Make sure you lock your vehicles. RPD reminds you to call 911 if you do see any suspicious activity. Tonight, Councilman Mike Jones says he'll withhold council funding for a new George with high school if concerns aren't addressed, both his and the families of those students. Jones and other council members shared their latest frustrations during a joint meeting with the Richmond Public School Board. Jones balked at the board revealing it submitted prototypes for design bids with a plan to get community engagement afterwards. We went through all this for a prototype. We went through all this back and forth 
for a prototype. Come on, y'all. As chair of the finance committee, I guarantee you, I, I am willing to hold funding until we get a plan, until we know where we're going. The council is set to vote on transferring $7.3 million to RPS for design on December 13th. Now to our continuing coronavirus coverage tonight. As warnings are being issued about the new coronavirus variant, Governor Ralph Northam says he has no immediate plans to declare a state of emergency or reinstate COVID restrictions. The Omicron variant is concerning health officials worldwide. It remains unclear how easily it spreads, whether it causes more severe disease or evades vaccine protection. As of Monday afternoon, there are still no confirmed cases in the U.S. Northam says now is the time to take precautions, but not panic. Everybody, this is a wake up call. If you have not been vaccinated, if you haven't received your, your booster, this is the time to do it. The Virginia Department of Health and CDC are both actively screening viral samples for the presence of new variants. Now this Friday, don't forget to join us as we light up Richmond for the holiday season. This year's RVA Illuminates is Friday, December 3rd at Canava Plaza. 8 News will be live out there starting at 5. We'll be bringing you all the sights and sounds of the celebration. So come join the party in person or join us right here on 8 News. It promises to be a good time. Still ahead on 8 News at 11, new evidence released in the sexual assault case involving former Governor Andrew Cuomo. We'll break down with the nine hours of testimony revealed. John. All right, well, milder temperatures headed your way tomorrow. It's also going to be another breezy day for us here with winds for a while in the afternoon between 15 and 20 miles an hour. It's like a full of the forecast. I think you're going to enjoy the temperatures. It's coming up next. You're watching 8 News at 11, and we are covering the news where you live. Stay right there. JB, Eric, and I will be right back.
Welcome back to 8 News at 11. I'm Eric Phillips. I'm Deanna Albritton. New details tonight in the sexual harassment investigation involving former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo as the New York Attorney General releases new evidence in the case. Trevor Alt breaks down the testimony from several of the former governor's accusers. For the first time, you are watching video testimony of former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. Have you ever had an inappropriate relationships with women on your staff? Inappropriate, I assume, means a sexual relationship with women on my staff. The answer is no. Today, the New York Attorney General releasing nearly nine hours of video testimony over 11 hours of questioning, recorded in July as part of their investigation, which found Cuomo sexually harassed 11 women, leading to his resignation. Along with Cuomo's testimony, the AG's office also releasing a trove of documents and video testimony from six accusers, including former aides Lindsey Boylan, Charlotte Bennett, and Brittany Camisso. And so you have hugged. Ms. Camisso. I have hugged her and she has initiated many of the hugs. But in her interview recorded in May, Camisso claims those hugs made her uncomfortable and one went a step too far. I remember his hand just sliding right up my blouse. And I remember looking down and I remember seeing his hand, which is, I would say, a, a large hand and uh, over the, my bra. The attorney general's report said they found Cuomo's denials to lack credibility and to be inconsistent with the weight of the evidence obtained during our investigation. And the former governor is now facing a charge of misdemeanor forcible touching stemming from that alleged incident with Camisso. Cuomo says that interaction never happened and has repeatedly denied all claims of sexual misconduct, but he did publicly apologize to the 11 women who have accused him. This is not to say that there are not 11 women who I truly offended. There are. And for that, I deeply, deeply apologize. The most accurate forecast in Central Virginia. Now, your Storm Tracker 8 weather. Hello, friends. Storm Tracker 8 Chief Meteorologist John Bernier. Now, we had a cool day today, barely making it to 50 degrees over most of Central Virginia, but the last day of November, the first couple of days of December, shaping up to be rather mild for us here. Let's go to the big board, show you what's going on this evening. Now, there are some clouds streaking their way down out of the Ohio River Valley. They've been crossing the Great Lakes through the day, now moving into portions of West Virginia, and there's even a few radar returns associated with that. This evening, you can see we take a look at the big picture on real-time Viper radar. Looks like a nice little area of snow crossing Ohio, coming down into portions of West Virginia. I'll come in a little bit closer on this for you, kind of show you what's happening right now, as you can see here. Just trying to work its way into the mountains, but this is all going to slide off to the north of us, and it's going to have a tough time climbing over into parts of central and northern Virginia. So I think maybe up around Winchester might be a couple of snow flurries west of Baltimore. We're just going to get some clouds out of all of this. Now, it is a little chilly out there right now because of the fair skies. We've got uh, the clouds beginning to move in over us here, so they'll stop the fall of temperatures, but we're down to 29 degrees right now. 25 degrees Louisa, 25 degrees in Farmville, 26 degrees over in Stanton. That Charlottesville number is a little out of whack. So we'll probably go down another two degrees or so for the remainder of the night and then we'll uh, have the clouds coming in over. So when you wake up tomorrow, what you're going to see is partly cloudy skies in the morning, then mostly sunny in the afternoon. We get those breezes, but it pumps our temperatures up into the mid to upper 50s. So then the next thing we look forward to after this little disturbance crosses early tomorrow morning is a fair afternoon, a breezy afternoon. Tomorrow night will not be as chilly over us here. We should stay in the 30s. And then Wednesday, another quick moving systems coming our way. We get clouds coming in. The day will be mostly cloudy in the evening. I think a few sprinkles are going to be possible for us. And then we head into Thursday and oh, you are in for a treat. Mostly sunny skies here on Thursday. We have temperatures on Thursday headed up. Yes, into the 60s over us here, potentially the middle 60s, about 65 to 67 degrees. And that's not looking to be the warmest day of the week. It looks like that will be Friday when temperatures could be between 65 and 70 here in Central Virginia. Good amount of sunshine still in the 60s on Saturday. We get cooler on Sunday. I'm looking ahead to Sunday night and Monday for 
a more impressive weather system to be coming our way, probably giving us some rainfall Sunday night into Monday, and then temperatures staying in the low to mid 50s Monday and Tuesday. Deanna. Thanks, JB. Well, we want to tell you about remarkable women because we have all been inspired and influenced by some of them. So we want you to nominate a woman who's made a difference in your life or the lives of others for our remarkable women contest. Head to WRIC.com to share her story and she could be featured on 8 News. You have until December 31st to do that. We'll be right back after the break. A Monday night football battle between Washington and Seattle. We've got the latest coming up tonight on 8 Sports at 11. Later tonight on Nightline, Omicron, the new COVID-19 variant, raising concerns here at home. What you need to know about the new strain, plus the life and legacy of Virgil Abloh, how the barrier-breaking designer reimagined the house of Louis Vuitton. Eight Sports is sponsored by James River Air. Welcome back to Eight Sports at 11. I'm Natalie Calabat. The Washington football team was back under the lights against the Seattle Seahawks, drawing fans from both sides to FedEx Field. For Taylor Reed, the attraction of seeing Russell Wilson was the main draw. Uh, big Russell Wilson fan. He's a great guy. Um, he's from the Virginia area, but um, you know he's done a, a huge thing. He's a he's a big uh, inspiration in the Seattle area. Um, does a lot with with charities visiting children the children's hospital um, almost every week 
Um, and it's, it's awesome to have a, a, a leader on our, on our team like that who's a, just a good guy through and through, um, as well as being one of the best players in the league. North Carolina natives Doug McGuire and Alan Holman are on opposite sides. Well, I've always liked Seattle, and I love Russell Wilson because, well, he played at state, and he's, I just, I love him. Him, not so much. <laughs> Chase Young, you know, first round draft pick, Hall of Fame potential. I've been a Washington fan since I was little. You know, tonight, who knows? Nat Crandall says the playoff race is wide open. The whole league seems to have been hit or miss, so I feel like we're in a great position to turn the ship around. Um, as far as the Cowboys not winning so much and need to be on a losing streak and we're on the uptick, it gives me a little bit of hope that maybe we can win the division the second year in a row. Reed, who lives in the area, enjoys spending time with both his family and being able to see his Seattle Seahawks on the East Coast. Traveling down, visiting my, my sister who lives in the area, um, take every chance we can to get to Seattle on the East Coast. Uh, being a West Coast team, it's not always easy to see them in person, so always excited to see them. I'm glad to visit uh, FedEx Field for the first time. Although friends, McGuire and Holman have to hold back on a night like tonight. It's not too bad. Just uh, every once in a while when they have to play, we take a few jabs at each other and stuff. But Washington's been bad for so long, it's not that big of a deal. Well, what RG3 ended his career in Seattle here in Washington, so, you know, I'm kind of bitter about that. Washington picked up its third win in a row and heads to Las Vegas next Sunday. At FedEx Field, Natalie Calabat, 8 Sports. While you sip that leftover gravy, watch this. You'd think I would learn, but yet I haven't. I, I <laughs> tossed it in the oven and boom, it came right back at me. It, 